The Battle of the Thames, also known as the Battle of Moravian Town, was a United States victory in the War of 1812 against the United Kingdom and the Tecumseh's Confederacy. It took place on October 5, 1813, near present-day Chatham, Ontario in Upper Canada. British troops under Major General Henry Proctor had occupied Detroit until the U.S. Navy gained control of Lake Erie, depriving them of their supplies. Proctor was forced to retreat north up the River Thames to Moravian Town, where his allies, the Tribal Confederacy and a Shawnee leader Tecumseh, had no choice but to follow. American infantry and cavalry under future President William Henry Harrison drove off the outnumbered British and then defeated the native warriors who were demoralized by Tecumseh's death in action. American control over the northwest frontier was re-established, the tribal confederacy collapsed, and Proctor would later be court-martialed for his poor leadership. Background During the last months of 1812 and for much of 1813, the American Army of the Northwest under William Henry Harrison was attempting to recover Detroit and capture Fort Amherstburg at Amherstburg from the right division of the British Army in Upper Canada, which was commanded by Major General Henry Proctor. The British position depended on maintaining command of Lake Erie. The sparsely populated region produced insufficient crops and cattle to feed Proctor's troops. The sailors of the British ships on the lake, and above all the large numbers of native warriors and their families gathered at Amherstburg under Tecumseh, supplies could effectively be brought to them only by ships on the lake. Also, if naval command of Lake Erie passed to the Americans, they would be able to land an army on the North Shore at any point of their choosing cutting off Proctor from reinforcement from the east. From the start of the war to the end of July 1813, the British ships, which since May 5, 1813 were led by Commander Robert Harriet Berkeley, had maintained control of the lake. They contained the American squadron under Master Commandant Oliver Hazard Perry at Presque Isle Harbour, when Berkeley lifted the blockade for two days in order to receive supplies. Perry was able to move his ships across the sandbar at the entrance to the harbour and into the lake. Barclay declined to attack them. Once it was fully armed and manned, Perry's superior squadron instituted a counter-blockade of Amherstburg, and supplies of food there rapidly ran short. Finally, with supplies almost exhausted, Barclay put out to seek battle with Perry. On September 10, Perry gained a complete victory in the Battle of Lake Erie, after a hard-fought battle. On receiving Perry's hastily written note that, We have met the enemy and they are ours, Harrison knew that Proctor would be forced to retreat, and ordered an advance. 1,000 mounted troops began advancing along the lake shore to Detroit, and 2,500 foot soldiers were carried there into Amherstburg by Perry's ships once the damage they had received in the battle had been repaired. Proctor's retreat even before he received news of Barclay's defeat. Proctor had made preparations to fall back to the British position at Burlington Heights at the western end of Lake Ontario. Tecumseh knew that this would remove all protection from the tribes in the Confederation whose lands lay to the west of Detroit and attempted to dissuade Proctor, saying, Our fleet has gone out. We know they have fought, we have heard the great guns but know nothing of what has happened to our father with one arm, Barclay who had lost an arm in 1809. Our ships have gone one way, and we are much astonished to see our father, Proctor, tying up everything and preparing to run the other, without letting his red children know what his intentions are. We must compare our father's conduct to that of a fat animal that carries its tail upon its back but when affrighted, it drops it between its legs and runs off. Nevertheless, Proctor could not defend Fort Amherstburg. Not only was there no food, but the guns had been removed from the fort to be mounted on Barclay's ships. Proctor began to retreat up the Thames River on September 27. Tecumseh had no option but to go with him. Proctor apparently agreed to a compromise to retreat only as far as Moravian Town, a settlement of Lenape Indians who had migrated from the United States. 
As this was the highest point of the river to which Bato could navigate, it was safe from outflanking moves by water. Also, some supplies could in theory be brought there overland from Burlington Heights, although the roads were very poor. However, Proctor made no attempt to fortify this position. The British retreat was badly managed, and the soldiers had been reduced to half rations. Proctor was alleged to have left the main body of his army under his second-in-command, Colonel Augustus Warburton of the 41st Regiment, without orders, while he led the retreat, accompanied by his wife and family, the other women and dependents, and his personal baggage. The British soldiers were becoming increasingly demoralized and Tecumseh's warriors grew ever more impatient with Proctor for his unwillingness to stop and fight, giving Proctor reason to fear a mutiny by the warriors. The Americans left a brigade under Duncan MacArthur to garrison Detroit and another under Lewis Cass to garrison Sandwich, Ontario. Harrison led the main body from Sandwich in pursuit of Proctor on October 2. As they advanced, Harrison's men captured several abandoned boats and a steady stream of British stragglers. They caught up with the retreating British and Indians late on October 4. Tecumseh skirmished with the Americans near Chatham to slow the American advance, but the warriors were quickly overwhelmed. The bateau carrying Warburton's reserve ammunition and the last of the food went to ground and were left behind, to be captured by an American raiding party. Forces. William Henry Harrison's force numbered at least 3,500 infantry and cavalry. He had a small detachment of regulars from the 27th U.S. Infantry and five brigades of Kentucky militia led by Isaac Shelby, the 63-year-old governor of Kentucky and a hero of the American Revolutionary War. He also had 1,000 volunteer cavalry under Colonel Richard Mentor Johnson. Most were from Kentucky, but some of them were from the River Raisin area. Spurred on by the slogan, Remember the River Raisin, Proctor had about 800 soldiers, mainly from the 41st Regiment. The veterans of the 1st Battalion of the regiment had been serving in Upper Canada since the start of the war, and had suffered heavy casualties in several engagements during 1813. They had been reinforced by the young soldiers of the 2nd Battalion. Most of the regiment's officers were dissatisfied with the leadership of Proctor, but the next in command, Colonel Warburton, refused to countenance any move to deprive Proctor of command. Tecumseh led about 500 native warriors. Battle. Shortly after daybreak on October 5, after ordering his troops to abandon their half-cooked breakfast and retreat a further two miles, Proctor formed the British regulars in line of battle with a single six-pounder cannon. He planned to trap Harrison on the banks of the Thames, driving the Americans off the road with cannon fire. However, he had taken no steps towards fortifying the position, so the ground presented no obstacle to the American mounted troops. While scattered trees masked the British fire, Tecumseh's warriors took up positions in a black ash swamp on the British right to flank the Americans. Tecumseh rode along the British line, shaking hands with each officer, before joining his warriors. General Harrison surveyed the battlefield and ordered James Johnson to make a frontal attack against the British regulars with his mounted Kentucky riflemen. Despite the Indians' flanking fire, Johnson broke through, the British cannon having failed to fire. The exhausted, dispirited and half-starved British troops fired one ragged fusillade before giving way. Immediately Proctor and about 250 of his men fled from the field. The rest surrendered. Tecumseh and his followers remained and carried on fighting. Richard Johnson charged into the Indian position at the head of about 20 horsemen to draw attention away from the main American force. But Tecumseh and his warriors answered with a volley of musket fire that stopped the cavalry charge. Fifteen of Johnson's men were killed or wounded, and Johnson himself was hit five times. Johnson's main force became bogged down in the swamp mud. Tecumseh is believed to have been killed during this fighting. The main force finally made its way through the swamp, and James Johnson's troops were freed from their attack on the British. 
with the American reinforcements converging and news of Tecumseh's death spreading quickly, Indian resistance soon dissolved. Colonel Johnson may have been the one who shot Tecumseh, though the evidence is unclear. William Whitley, a Revolutionary War veteran, is also credited with killing Tecumseh. Whitley, of Crab Orchard, Kentucky, volunteered for the raid on Tecumseh's camp and was killed during the attack. Before the attack, he had requested that General Harrison have his scalp removed if he died and send it to his wife. After the battle, American mounted troops moved on and burned Moravian Town, a settlement of pacifist Christian Muncy of the Moravian Church, who had not participated in the fighting. Because the enlistments of the militia component of Harrison's army were about to expire, the Americans retired to Detroit. Three currently active regular battalions of the United States Army perpetuate the lineage of the old 27th Infantry Regiment, elements of which were at the Battle of the Thames. Casualties Harrison reported that the British regulars had 12 killed and 22 wounded prisoners. Lieutenant Richard Bullock of the 41st Regiment, however, said that there were 12 killed and 36 wounded prisoners. More than a year after the battle, British Colonel Augustus Warburton and Lieutenant Colonel William Evans both reported that 18 were killed and 25 wounded. Harrison reported 601 British troops captured, a figure that included the prisoners taken during the retreat leading up to the battle and stragglers captured after it. The Native Americans recorded their own casualties as 16 killed, including Tecumseh and Roundhead. Although Harrison claimed that 33 dead warriors were found in the woods after the battle, there are conflicting versions of the American loss in the battle. Harrison stated that seven were killed outright, five died of wounds, and 17 more were wounded. Major Isaac Shelby said that seven or eight killed outright, four died of their wounds and about more were 20 wounded. Participants Robert McAfee gave 10 killed and 35 wounded, while Peter Trizzler, Jr., said there were 14 killed and 20 wounded. Historian Samuel R. Brown stated that were 25 killed or fatally injured and 50 wounded in Johnson's regiment, and 2 killed and 6 to 7 wounded in the infantry. For a total of 27 killed and 56 or 57 wounded, Harrison informed United States Secretary of War John Armstrong, Jr., that the only casualties inflicted on his command by the British regulars at the battle were three men wounded, all of the rest were caused by the Indians. Results the American victory led to the re-establishment of American control over the northwest frontier, apart from skirmishes between raiding parties or other detachments, and an American mounted raid near the end of 1814 which resulted in the Battle of Malcolm's Mills. The Detroit front remained comparatively quiet for the rest of the war. The death of Tecumseh was a crushing blow to the Indian alliance he had created, and it effectively dissolved following the battle. Shortly after the battle, Harrison signed an armistice at Detroit with the chiefs or representatives of several tribes. Although others fought on until the end of the war, American victory at the Thames failed to translate into recapture of Illinois, Wisconsin and other Midwestern territories, which the British and Indiana held until the war's end. He then transferred most of his regulars eastward to the Niagara River and went himself to Washington where he was acclaimed a hero. However, a comparatively petty dispute with President James Madison and John Armstrong resulted in him resigning his commission as Major General. Harrison's popularity grew, and he was eventually elected President of the United States. Richard Mentor Johnson eventually became Vice President to President Martin Van Buren, based partly on the belief that he had killed Tecumseh. Proctor later rallied 246 men of the 41st Regiment at the Grand River, reinforced by some young soldiers of the 2nd Battalion who had not been present at the battle. The two battalions were reorganized and merged as the regiment was severely under strength at this point. The experienced survivors of the 1st Battalion were placed in the Grenadier and Light Infantry Companies. 
the soldiers of the 41st who were taken prisoner at Moravian Town and the Battle of Lake Erie were exchanged or released towards the end of 1814. They had been held in encampments near present-day Sandusky, Ohio, and had suffered severely from sickness during their captivity. Proctor's court-martial in May 1814, Proctor was charged with negligence and improper conduct. Though a court-martial could not be held until December, when campaigning had ceased for the winter and a suitably senior board of officers could be assembled, they judged that Proctor had managed the retreat badly, failing to secure his stores, and also disposed the troops ineffectively at Moravian Town. He was sentenced to be suspended from rank and pay for six months.